Hi, this is Bruce Rawls. I'm speaking again with Susan Dugan about A Course in Miracles. Our topic for today is what is the real meaning of sacrifice, which is uh, uh, section 13 in the Manual for Teachers of A Course in Miracles. And Susan uh, recently was covering this topic in her Tuesday evening online class and uh, suggested it. And I thought, what a great one, because <laughs> sacrifice is really such a, a, a key element in the ego thought system and all the various and sundry and obvious and not so obvious forms that it takes. Um, uh, so anyway, great topic and uh, looking forward to uh, reading and discussing this with you. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, sacrifice, you know, from the, from the course's perspective, definition of sacrifice um, really is on two levels. Like the course is always speaking on the, on, on the level of truth, which is the level of our oneness joined with one and, you know, that continues <laughs> unabated despite our belief that, that it's gone for good, that we destroyed it. And on that level, um, you know, we believe that we destroyed, that we destroyed God. We destroyed, we created an alternate reality. And so we sacrificed God's love, um, you know, to purchase our individual existence. Right. And so um, once we, once we believed that and became terrified and guilty over that and projected out a whole you know, world as a defense against that and forgot we made up this whole thing, then, um, you know, on level two in the, in the dream that we're living this, this life apart from God as separate bodies in a, a world of, of, of other bodies that are very different, um, it's, it's really about that idea of giving something up to get, right? To get you to meet my needs in some way or, or another, to somehow survive in this, in this world. And that, that requires, you know, I was thinking the other day that there's really no way out. Um, you know, we shouldn't feel guilty <laughs> when we catch ourselves mm -hmm. being selfish um, in, in the sense that, I mean, we should notice it and, and you know, notice, raise, use it to get us back to the mind, use it to get us back to the real cause. But as, soon, as whenever we're identified as bodies, we are need machines, as Ken used to say. So there's no way that that I can really, um, you know, not in some way be be trying to constantly manipulate everything around me to just to just get through the day. I mean, it, it requires us to do that. Ken used to. Um, I, I remember being horrified when I first came to the course, listening to Ken's. <laughs> Ken's. Um, I think I, I, I the first my first um, introduction to Ken was through. Um, his commentary uh, videos on every uh, every uh, chapter of the text, and and he was really emphasizing the whole cannibalism idea <laughs> there, mm -hmm. and you know it was just like you know that that just uh, we're we're cannibalizing everything because we're this you know we're we're, we're we're when we inhale we're you know cannibalizing oxygen and we're we're just constantly feeding uh, thousands of little microorganisms right. Meeting, meeting, meeting their demise every every second of our our right. seemingly mortal existence. Exactly. And then, of course, you know, projecting <laughs> onto that idea and believing that microorganisms can invade us, right, and um, and destroy us, and you know, so so it really involves the whole the whole ego thought system right. is is really about that idea of trying to substitute for God's love um, through something outside ourselves. There's some sort of replacement. We're all like little Pac-Man, just yeah. <laughs> True, yeah. try, trying to consume the rest of the universe as, as seemingly separate selves. Uh, right. You know, and then, uh, of course, never really feeling the lack. Right. You know, I mean, never and never really getting rid of the guilt either that we do project on each other, you know, trying to constantly um, jockey for the, the less innocent or the less guilty person, the more in, relatively innocent because there's no real... Mm -hmm. innocence possible here in a in a dream of guilt so yeah. so anyway that's what the, the themes that this <laughs> talks about in here right um, right do you want to start reading the, the, sure. the first, first paragraph i think it's probably short enough that we could read the whole thing isn't it yep yeah okay so um it starts out although in truth the term sacrifice is altogether meaningless it does have meaning in the world so again it's based on that impossible tiny mad idea that we could be separate so it's meaningless because that didn't happen but in the world he says like all things in the world 
its meaning is temporary and will ultimately fade into the nothingness from which it came when there is no more use for it, when we no longer need it as a defense, mm -hmm. right? So now its real meaning is a lesson. Like all lessons, it is an illusion, for in reality, there is nothing to learn. Yet this illusion must be replaced by a corrective device, another illusion that replaces the first, so both can finally disappear. The first illusion, which must be displaced before another thought system can take hold, is that it is, that it is a sacrifice to give up the things of this world. What could this be but an illusion, since this world itself is nothing more than that? So, you know, what world? I mean, the Course says there is no world. <laughs> the central <laughs> the world. thought. I mean, it, 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 yeah, yeah, right. The central thought this Course has come to teach. Mm -hmm. so, um, so the things of the world are all those substitutes for God's love, all those, you know, all of our idols, all of our special relationships, all of our, um, you know, um, oxygen, <laughs> money, food, um, you know, relationships, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, work i mean all of it right mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, as you're sharing those different categories, I'm picturing uh, Jeff Siebert's Wheel of Misfortune uh, mm -hmm. diagram and all, all the little, uh, you know, things that special love, hate um, uh, discs, I think of them as, you know, you, you right. when, at one point they, they come to the foreground and hit us in the, you know, in the face with, okay, this is now my current issue. And, you know, so for say the last few, three months, <laughs> probably for most people on the planet, it's, it's COVID-19 and pandemic. And, and then maybe that'll subside for a moment. And then it's like, oh, now it's the, the repercussions of the financial uh, tumult that's, uh, you know, intertwined right. with that. And, and, and then for someone else, it might be you know, racial issues. For someone else, it might, it, for, and it, these things can all, you know, keep jockeying for position as, as the current issue. Just, stage, right? They're just exactly, some, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and the idea is to, to be as kind as we can while recognizing that these are things that we set up to create the upset. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. but we've conveniently erased the part of the, the diagram where the cause to the effect arrow uh, takes place in the mind as is projection and, and, uh, and you know, so so looking at the world as a, as a mechanism for for forgiveness and seeing that the only thing that we really need to sacrifice is is uh, and it's not really a sacrifice is is our investment in an insane thought system that that, right. that has set us up <laughs> to be upset and and right. I, I think that's why that last sentence you know. Uh, you know, what could this be an illusion since this world is nothing more than that? Um, but it, you know, I guess the one part of that, it, is it a sacrifice to give up the things of the world? Well, if, if this really is just the, uh, the sum total of all the interpretations we've laid upon all those things that seem to come and go, you know, and confront us, then it's really just giving up uh, the maladaptive interpretations of the ego, isn't it? Yeah. I think right, the, course, right. the course really tries to get us to, to to look at those things and say, "Gee, what if what if I didn't have to be, you know, battered and and bounced around by everything that that seems to cross my path every moment, and I, there was a a quiet center that I could uh, stay in in my mind and and just just watch gently the shenanigans and the and the the manipulations of the ego and, and all this little Pac-Man antics <laughs> trying right, to, right. trying to change the world and, and just, you know, and forgive ourselves basically. Right. So. Right. I mean, there's, there's, you know, we do, we do find it to be a sacrifice to give up the things of the world. I mean that, you know, it, our, our attention is riveted on the world mm -hmm. and it's, it's completely, it, it's successful in convincing us that there's meaning in the meaningless, you know, it, it keeps us mindless. And so we're not really, you know, the whole development of trust in the manual is really about that questioning, beginning to, um, you know, question the, the values that we hold and, and really see that they don't have the value that, we, that we've placed on them, that they're not really, you know, they're not really serving us. Um, and then, and then all, you know, beginning to see that they're all the same, that they're all distractions, right? And um, and we all share the interest of trying to, you know, trying to, to rem remember that, that they're not really serving us and that we have, you know, that this is not our home and, 
we have a different teacher, a different presence within our mind that, um, that constantly questions the value of the world, constantly questions. It's getting us to look at how they're really hurting us instead of helping us. Right. And they're keeping us apart because they're, we're using them to block the awareness of, of love's presence. And we can't remember it as long as we're riveted on and defending the, the things of the world, you know, the, 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 our idols, our specialness, our, um, you know, all of our substitutes. We have to begin to question the value of them and, and raise those to a different um, perspective. So do you want to read the next one? Sure. Uh, it takes great learning both to realize and to accept the fact that the world has nothing to give. What can the sacrifice of nothing mean? It cannot mean that you have less because of it. There is no sacrifice in the world's terms that does not involve the body. Think a while, <clears throat> excuse me, about what the world calls sacrifice. Power, fame, money, physical pleasure. Who is the quote hero unquote to whom all these things belong? Could they mean anything except to a body? Yet a body cannot evaluate. By seeking after such things, the mind associates itself with the body, obscuring its identity, capital I identity, and losing sight of what it really is. So, uh, you know, it's again, all the, the outer shield of oblivion, special love, hate, mm -hmm. uh, de decoys and, and uh, distractions that uh, fortunately become our classroom when seen properly. And Holy, I think Holy Spirit tries at every turn, at every moment to, to say, hey, there's another way of looking at this. Instead of, it doesn't mean you have to give up anything. There's, doesn't, doesn't mean you, you have to, to deny the special relationships that just give them a different purpose. Exactly. And if the purpose is forgiveness, then suddenly it changes everything. And then, then our, our emphasis is on, you know, making it about the other person and shared interests and, and you know, how can I be truly helpful and recognizing that, that someone else's call for, for love or for help is really my own. And so we're all in it together. Right. <laughs> How's that for, for a bunch of different course ideas in one sense? Right. Yeah. I mean, it's really about, about, you know, changing our purpose of, of our lives to a classroom of forgiveness, yeah. as you were saying, and, um, and really beginning to see that, that it's, you know, it's only always the healing of my own mind that that this is an invitation to when I when I be, when I notice myself becoming defensive, becoming invested, becoming needy, in, in you know wanting to have things go my way constantly. And you know, I mean, I I realize a lot lately how ridiculously immature I am, <laughs> even at my ripe old age, in believing that the world will you know that. Uh, being surprised when the next bad thing happens, you know, <laughs> um, you know, kind of thinking, well, I've already like had so many things happen that it's just, you know, the odds are it's not going to, you know, I'm going to get, I'm going to be able to coast for a little while. <laughs> well, that's not the world, you know, it just, I mean, why would I think that? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's not about, again, you know, we're so deeply invested in be in seeing ourselves as victims and, um, you know, which is really what the Pollyanna sort of, um, you know, that that sort of hopefulness of the world working out really kind of comes from that place of, mm -hmm. of you know, it's not really what, what it looks to be, you know, it's, it's what we're really asking for is exactly what we imagined, which is a world that can't meet our needs, because mm -hmm. we believe that that we don't deserve to have our needs met because of what we did to God. So there's no way out of that, you know, in the world. Exactly. The world's as long as gonna do what it's going to do, you know. Yeah, I was just gonna say, as as long as the, the sabotage machinery of the ego mind is is, you know, running unabated, we're right. gonna we're gonna keep setting ourselves up for, you know, a, a, a consistent yeah, uh, you know, although varied stream of disappointments and and uh, you know uh, just anger, fear, boredom, <laughs> the whole, the whole gamut of of all the all the the crazy things that the ego dishes out in order to keep us um, from the peace that is Mind our world. Yeah. And, my, and mindless, yeah. yeah. And from, you know, from, from reclaiming the power, the only power and the only hope that we really have, which is to go back to the decision-making mind right. and, and identify with a different part of our mind, which is the only real part of our mind that's always peaceful and always comforting and always, you know, unaffected, really. Mm -hmm. Mm 
by by the you know by the craziness of of the roller coaster world that we set up you know and so i mean that we we have that choice that we don't take it is you know shows us how very very um invested we well how frightened we are Mm -hmm. of you know that 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 this really did happen and we don't and, and our vow was to never go back to the mine you know we thought that that would save us and and also how there's a part of us that still you know still wants to cling to this idea that that um our experiment in individuality has some value you know is going to bring us something that we really want I, yeah, as you're saying that, I was I reminded of, I think there's a phrase somewhere in the course of, about a petulant device. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and it really is, it's a very immature, very um, immature. arrogant, silly, childish, basically just dumb <laughs> set right. of expectations that the ego has of thinking that somehow the world is going to make us happy and, right. and, and we're entitled to to having the world work on, on the ego's terms. and it never does. And, and eventually we generalize the, you know, noticing that disappointment and seeing that it, it's completely maladaptive is, is you know, to harken back to Ken's right. favorite phrase, it's, you know, the maladaptive solution to the non-existent right. problem. But, right. but as long as we think that we have a problem and that it's, it's based in the world, uh, we're always going to be at the mercy of the world instead of being absolutely being merciful I mean, to, our, to it. Yeah. Peace is, is, is absolutely fragile, you know, yeah. completely. Yeah. It can be toppled by, you know, by the tiniest of, of things going wrong, not let alone like the big catastrophes that, right, right. that can go wrong, you know, so, yeah. In, in fact, as you're sharing that, I was also thinking of something else that Ken said that really struck me as, as astute and uh, of, uh, along with so many other things he's shared that were, were brilliant, is that, you know, not only do we have physical bodies that, that have us, you know, our, all our sensory data is focused on the external and and it's acute, acutely, uh, you know, de by design, acutely uh, sensitive to pain and and discomfort, and has a very, you know, um, you know, narrow range of, of a comfort zone. But also psychologically, you know, yeah. we 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 train ourselves to be triggered by the the, the least imagined slight and and uh, you know the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, both physically and. Uh, you know, emotionally mm -hmm. and, and uh, psychologically. Financially. Yeah, and yeah exactly. Every, every, any little thing can upset us. And mm -hmm. in, unless we're paying attention, uh, we don't notice the fact that we did the setup on some level that we're, we're not necessarily conscious of. But, but if we are willing to consider our complicity in it, it's like, oh, yeah, maybe on some level I chose the wrong teacher. And that's why I keep, you know, banging my head against the wall thinking right. – thinking that uh, there's, if I do that enough, my head will stop hurting and then the world will just magically deliver what I think it should deliver. <laughs> right. But yeah. we can at least put on the brakes and say, you know, this way lies madness. I've been here before. Yeah. It's not going to, you know, I mean, I find myself more and more that's, that's kind of the process that I'm using because it's just like, okay, yeah, let's, I think you can just stop right now because has this ever gone well, you know, going in this direction, <laughs> mm -hmm. meaning, you know, meaning our mind wandering, following the projection, getting all involved with, you know, whose fault it was and why it's happening and, you know, um, why don't they, they, they understand and what, you know, all of the whatever stories we're telling ourselves. But, you know, I mean, that may be true within the dream, but will it, will it ever be resolved to my satisfaction? No, it never will. And so, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just, I'm, I'm making myself crazy literally and and it's it's a choice you know it doesn't the world again the world does what the world does everybody's fighting the same hard battle of trying to prove they exist at god's expense but it's not their fault and from their perspective it's your fault so that's the way it is you know <laughs> it's not going to change <laughs> so somehow the word crazy reminded me of are you familiar with the folk singer greg brown he, I, I think so. Yeah. He, he he had a song that came out years ago. The, the lyrics were something like, "You drive me crazy with all the things you do and do not do," uh, mm -hmm. and then the response was, "And I love you so much, I'm going to drive you crazy too," kind of thing. But but that's kind of the the, the game right. that we play with everyone, not not just primary romantic relationships, right. but with really literally everyone and everything in the world. You know, the the ego strategy is to stay in a in a covertly or overtly some kind of constant battle 
yeah. because that's the that's the 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 underpinnings and the foundation of its whole identity is I exist at the expense of or um, you know and also you know as an adversary to everything else. Right. And, and that's and that's why we're we're in a state of constant fear, uh, loneliness, and uncertainty, as the course says. You know, because right. we we set it up as a, as a as a battle, whether we're, we're consciously aware of it in any moment or not. Huh? Right. And we believe, believe we you know I mean honestly we believe that we deserve all of the grief that we're getting. So, you know, it's just. <laughs> We made this up. It's our dream. So oh, were we we, thinking? I mean, we don't we're not responsible for the actual people and situations. We're not responsible for the pandemic, you know, at literally. Right. Um, we're but but we are responsible for the um, for the pain that and certainly our our reactions to our everything. Reactions to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and our you know, our choice to be feeling completely um, at the mercy of it without you know that we can't be peaceful at all mm -hmm. um and you know that's i i, I mean it's, it, it, totally we have a choice from moment to moment and all and from anything you know and there's no hierarchy of illusion so we have a choice with that and we have a choice with the bill that we just got or the um you know what just happened to our car or what you just said to me or you know um something that 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 came up from in my mind from the past that mm -hmm. seems to be haunting me again, you know? I mean, any of it, it's all the same. It's all the same reason, and, and, it's, and we're choosing it because, again, we want to, you know, prove that we really do exist, but it's not our fault. It's we're at the mercy of all of these forces that we can't control for me, right? So, yeah. Sacrifice addicts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you want to read the next one? I will. Okay. Once this confusion has occurred, so this really confusion of mind and body, I think, is what's being talked about here. It becomes impossible for the mind to understand that all the, quote, pleasures of the world are nothing. But what a sacrifice, and it is a sacrifice indeed, all this entails. Now has the mind condemned it itself to seek without finding, to be forever dissatisfied and discontented, to know not what it really wants to find. Who can escape this self-condemnation? Only through God's word could this be possible, for self-condemnation condemnation is a decision about identity, and no one doubts what he believes he is. He can doubt all things, but never this. You know, so once I believed that, that I, I, I believed that I was a miserable sinner <laughs> that really, through, you know, destroyed God's love, then, then I always believed that, you know, I mean, that sets up the whole idea of the world that I, that I escape into and then try to substitute for what I think I destroyed and try to get rid of the guilt that, that, you know, by trading it off onto someone else. And how do I do that? Well, all of this incoming crap that seems to be happening proves that I'm not the one in my mind. Right. Yeah. As long as, as long as there's an external scapegoat, then exactly. go, our goat scape is, is, uh, yeah. is <laughs> sustained. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the self condemning, you know, I was, I, it, it is a decision about identity and I was thinking, well, the identity that we're all really looking for is the identity of true innocence where, where everyone shares in that and nothing capital happened. I, yeah. Capital I innocence, capital I, I inclusion um, that, that really, is seemingly beyond our our capacity as uh, well actually it really is beyond our capacity of separate selves and that's why i think the course gradually eases us out of that um, maladaptive identity into right. the, into the real identity that that is transpersonal that that uh, that you know and through through the mechanism of, of looking for shared interests and and making it about the other person and all those kind of techniques and, and forgiving ourselves for for you, you know doing the things that that reinforce that, that craziness and gradually you know letting go of the uh, you know compulsion to want to make um the sacrifices of the world work and you know f foolishly of course um right. and then you know, at some point, you know, we just, it doesn't mean we stop doing the things we would be doing otherwise. It just means we're not invested in the outcome. And there's, you know, a greater kindness, I think, 
to right. tell everything that we do. And point. we don't really have to, you know, I mean, the course is so simple. Our part is so little. I mean, we just have to question the, the cause of what we're attributing um, our reactions to. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, we have to raise to doubt that, that it's, it's, the, it's whatever the object of our projection is, you know, that it's the, that it's the pandemic or that it's the, my flat tire or that it's, you know, this email or that it's this um, something in my body that's mm -hmm. malfunctioning. Um, you, you know, we just need to, to, to really raise that to doubt and recognize that, not, that none of these things can really take my peace away. I must have chosen the wrong teacher, like you were saying. And then the rest of it follows. I mean, we don't have to, you know, we don't have to think out, like, how do we, how, what are, how, how do we have common interests? How do we, um, how do we be kind? We don't really know how to do that at right, all. Right. I mean, so that's why we need a teacher, you know, that's why we kind of just, you, you know, we take the first step and a half really. And, um, which is, you know, the first, le um, less than five, I, um, I'm not upset for the reason I think questioning the cause mm -hmm. and, uh, less than 34, I could see peace instead of this, which is please help me see this differently to Jesus. And that's all we have to do. Yeah, yeah. Which and those, those encompass the outer and inner shields of oblivion of, mm -hmm. of making it about, you know, or thinking that that our upset is because of something out external, and then we need Holy Spirit's help with that, and then we also need Holy Spirit's help with, you know, the second step, which is realizing oh, the guilt that I now have brought back inside uh, is also unfounded there too because there really is an identity that Holy Spirit will teach me, uh, you know, to recall by seeing the impermanence and the illusory nature of the self that I made up. And, yeah. Well, and really, I mean, be before we have that experience, though, we, we just, we, you know, we drop our defensiveness. We just right. have that experience, you know, so right. it's an experience of the metaphysical part may or may not be there in the moment, but really all that we're asked to do is, is to do the step, you mm -hmm. know, and, and then allow our, our mind and, you know, to sort of wait for the answer mm -hmm. and the answer not being an answer, you know, in form, but the answer being that, you know, all is well, you're safe and supported. No one's guilty. I mean that we have that experience. We, it's not really an answer, but um, we have a shift. Yeah, where, where we uh, we don't feel that defensiveness anymore. We actually drop it. We're not letting go of it. Our, you know, through our through Susan or Bruce, uh, you know, our mind just once once we've turned away from the ego, and are willing to just wait for for you know the for our fear to subside, then then we just shift to Jesus's point of view. <laughs> you know, it's because it's what they're waiting. It's just our blocks that that we had to question enough to to get out of the way so jesus i was thinking i mean just drop it i was picturing you know a dog owner with a dog with a bone in its mouth or, or a toy right. that, that you know the dog wants to chase yeah. it you have to kind of you know, encourage the dog to drop it you know and, <laughs> and eventually they do and i think we're sort of like these slow learning dogs that you know eventually learn to drop our our you know tenacious grip on our insane thought system and uh, that doesn't work for us. And, right. and uh, Jesus has the little smelly treat saying, you know, <laughs> <laughs> here's, yeah, here's your innocence. <laughs> Except this, uh, this, it's a really good treat though. And in, yeah. in that metaphor well, to dogs, the smelly treats are pretty good. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm getting a puppy next week. So this is very much on my mind. <laughs> I, I was wondering about that. If yeah. that had happened yet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, all right. So is it my turn to read? Uh, let's see. Did we read the third one? I don't, let's see, once this confusion has occurred. Yes, I just okay. read that. Yeah, yeah okay. That, that, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll read number four then. God's teachers can have no regret on giving up the pleasures of the world. Is it a sacrifice to give up pain? Does an adult, does an adult <laughs> resent the giving up of children's toys? Does one whose vision, has, uh, whose vision has already glimpsed the face of Christ look back with longing on a slaughterhouse? <laughs> Oh, so many minced words, huh? Yeah. No one who has escaped the world and all its ills looks back on it with condemnation. Yet he must rejoice that he is free of all the sacrifice its values would demand of him. To them, he sacrifices all his peace. To them, he sacrifices all his freedom. 
and to possess them must he sacrifice his hope of heaven and remembrance of his father's love who in his sane mind chooses nothing as a substitute for everything and so, somehow the slaughterhouse reminded me of a the um, masonic handshake skit in an early monty python <laughs> Oh, if you, I don't know if you don't remember that one. Don't remember that one. Anyway, that's it's an architect who's designed a a slaughterhouse that's disguised as a block, you know, as a, as a luxury, uh, a, you know, a lodging. <laughs> Another silly Monty Python skit, but but it's it kind of to me is sort of apropos in the sense that you know the ego designs it's it it camouflages its slaughterhouse with all kinds of you know in fact in the skit they talk about well you know the people will will the, the tenants will be conveyed past uh pastoral scenes and and you know beautiful landscapes before they reach the counter rotating knives you know right, right. <laughs> and and then the, the people who are, are realizing that the, you know the in the architect's get that he's designing a slaughterhouse. Well, and he says, oh, that wasn't your intention to, to design a slaughterhouse. <laughs> but I mean, that's, that's the, the kind of silliness is that, that you know, we, we know that it, as egos, it's going to end badly. And yet we, we continue to play the charade and play the game. Yep. And, and, and we're not honest with ourselves in, right. in our assessment of the, the thought system that we still tenaciously cling to, that we think right. is going to somehow still pan out and work for us. Um, but if we can remember to, to, you know, laugh gently, but not derisively at, at the ego and just say, that's pretty crazy. Maybe, maybe there is another way of looking, looking at the world that, uh, I could, I could see the insanity of it and, and not to diminish in anyone's, you know, anguish or pain or whatever, but just to see right. that, that, that really isn't, we could not possibly sacrifice our real being by anything that we have done or haven't done in the world. Right. right. And, and that, and that's, you know, it takes a while for us to even get close to that idea, I think. Well, even intellectually. And yeah, we, yeah. we know how hard it is to really, um, have that experience, you know, we don't want to let go of it. And what, what's beautiful about the course, I think, is that it, because it, it does lead you through this mind training of really paying attention to your reactions, really, really becoming conscious of the way that you project um, and, you know, are, are constantly wanting to judge and blame, you know, we're really paying attention to the content of our minds um, as, as much as possible. That's the, what the workbook introduces that that lifelong learning, um, you know, practice. Of. And it's, you know, we really get to see how, how resistant we are to this, you know, how we really, wow, there I go again, you know, I mean, it just, I, I can't go five minutes without a judgmental thought arising, you know, seemingly as a result of, I can't go five minutes without something bothering me, you know, something attacking me, but that's, you know, that, that's not the cause. The cause is, is I already decided to be defensive and, you know, um, and so I found something to, to attribute the cause to outside me. And that's what we're addicted to doing. Yeah, and, as you're sharing that, I was thinking about that, the, the uh, acronym MAD or Mutually Assured Destruction, you know, kind of <laughs> usually in reference to nuclear war, but, but that's kind of the game the egos mm -hmm. play. It's, it's basically, it's, it's an insane strategy to um, basically commit suicide but but blame the other party um you know and and yet <laughs> on some level we know that it's it's ridiculous and we know that it's just a nightmarish movie but we've take we've gone to such great lengths to make it such a realistic dream yeah. that so we've, yeah. we've forgotten that this is an incredibly sophisticated hoax right of, of astronomical proportions and and so we need the little baby steps to to just notice and maybe maybe it, all it takes is just you know when someone passes us on the street and doesn't say hi or when we wave just say oh i don't have to take this personally this is this is something that i can afford to uh let go and and you know and we can do it with little things and then have that um help us toward the seemingly bigger things and, and right it's just really making it a habit a practice, yeah, yeah. You know, so that we do we, we it has to be applied ultimately to everything mm -hmm. and it does seem like some things are harder than others but yeah to make it you know that's the most important um 
organizing principle of our lives is, is, is really, you know, that, that's what gives our lives meaning is to give it the, the um, purpose of a classroom of forgiveness, which means we practice, 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 practice. That's how you become, you know, that's how you master a subject, right? <laughs> Um, and, and it requires, it requires that kind of dedication and diligence. And if we had, you know, if we put, Ken used to say half as much energy into, into practicing forgiveness as we do into, you know, trying to root ourselves more deeply in the dream, we, you know, think of, think of how, how it would speed us along. Yeah. But, you know, of course we can't fight ourselves and we can't skip steps. And, and there is a part of us that we're not conscious of. Um, that is you know actively fighting this and doesn't is terrified of it so we have to we have to go gently and we have to just keep practicing and and being patient with ourselves and you know again not trying to do it alone going back to you know even even when we're not feeling the love of jesus with us but you know trusting the development of trust is about saying well you know what i know that there's a part of my mind that doesn't agree with me right now and i really want to find it you know, and so we trust, we wait, we're, you know, we, that's faith, right? Yep. Knowing we don't have yeah. even a, a glimmer of a portion of the picture, let alone the whole <laughs> picture. <laughs> yeah. Right. And that the picture disappears ultimately into the nothingness from which it sprang, you know? I mean, our true identity is an abstract, undifferentiated union. So like, let's not even go there, but, um, you know, we really know nothing. We could stick with that. All right, so what is, I'm reading paragraph five now. Uh -huh. What is the real meaning of sacrifice? It is the cost of believing in illusions. So it is the price that must be paid for the denial of truth. Really the punishment, right? Um, there is no pleasure of the world that does not demand this for otherwise the pleasure would be seen as pain. And no one asks for pain if you recognize it as pain. It is the idea of sacrifice that makes him blind. He does not see what he is asking for, and so he seeks it in a thousand ways and in a thousand places, each time believing it is there, and each time disappointed in the end. Seek but do not find remains the world's stern decree, and no one who pursues the world's goals can do otherwise. So... Pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, once we believe in that, in that, you know, have that belief that, you know, forgot to laugh at the idea that we really could have sacrificed God, then, you know, we, we're just, we, we're driven to just keep seeking in the world for a way to make it work and a way to get away with it without, you know, ducking the punishment and yet knowing we've got the punishment coming, right? On, on that level where yeah. we think we are at. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, so the trust, I think it seems like more and more it becomes a, a, method, um, a way to notice um, Holy Spirit's promptings to, to question um, not only the strategy, but also the, the intended goal, which is, you know, thinking that the world is going to offer something to us. And and even though we don't know what really is the real alternative is, there's a, a feeling or an awareness that's sort of kind of like yesterday's workbook lesson. You know, the mm -hmm. the um, you know knowing that there's a, a real home in our mind that we we've never left and we can return to that is a place of peace so profound that we we can't even imagine what that's like. Mm -hmm. But but yet there it calls to us from that place in our mind in a way that that keeps us um you know it keeps reinforcing that trust because yeah. we ha even though we don't really have a full-blown permanent experience just yet we we do get little moments of, right. of respite where where we's like ah oh, i stopped judging i stopped condemning for a few moments yeah. i stopped trying yeah. to make it about the world doing it for me and in those moments we do have you know little little episodes of peace <laughs> A sigh of relief. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And in which there's no, you know, and what, what we're relieved of is is this the heaviness of the of the, the burden of this personal self. Right, the, really? which is the sacrifice. That right. is the, that is the big sacrifice we're asked to just right. gently question. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Uh, let's see. Shall I read six? 
Yep. You may believe this course requires sacrifice of all you really hold dear. In one sense, this is true, for you hold dear the things that crucify God's Son, and it is the course's aim to set him free. But do not be mistaken about what sacrifice means. It always means the giving up of what you want. And what, O oh teacher of God, is it that you want? You have been called by God, and you have answered. Would you now sacrifice that call? Few have heard it as yet, but they can turn to you. There is no other hope in all the world that they can trust. There is no other voice in all the world that echoes God's. If you would sacrifice the truth, they stay in hell. And if they stay, you will remain with them. So that, of course, speaks to the importance of relationships in the course and how right. it's our it's our um, assessment of everyone and everything in our world that either keeps us in hell or liberates us at any moment. Each little right. condemnation that I make of someone else injures me. Right. And the way that I'm providing hope to every everyone in the world, I mean, it's not literal, it's but but my decision, you know, my choice to change teachers <laughs> to, um, you know, go back to the decision-making mind and, and reclaim that power and, and choose to, you know, say, no, I don't want to go in this direction anymore. This, you know, this is, this is hurting me. Um, I'm, I must be wrong about what I, you know, what I'm attributing as the cause of my upset. Um, our willingness to do that and then to open to, to Jesus, Holy Spirit, is what you know is really demonstrating to all minds that they can make that choice too mm -hmm. and so that's that's the way that we help each other you know it's just we're, we're part of the same mind we're just fragments of that same decision making mind so whether or not the, any person that we're in relationship at the time you know also wants to make that choice i mean this is nothing that's ever discussed verbally it's just done at the level of your own mind again your own mind in need of healing but it's on some level it's communicated to all minds when we do that it strengthens the resolve and the power of the decision making mind and you know offers that opportunity to others i mean i find that especially powerful in like uh, parent and children relationships and um you know well in, in our special relationships in general because mm -hmm. because the, you know when i really do make that shift to um you know which is it's you know it's, I'm often very resistant to it, so there's quite a time lag. But when I do have that shift to um, really allowing Jesus's perspective that's already there and letting go of the blocks to it, then then my defensiveness really is gone. And um, you know, so very often that that does have a um, empowering effect on whoever you're with. Very often it doesn't too. So we're not supposed to conclude from, you know, we can't judge on form or behavior, but, um, but you will be at peace and you will only be loving regardless. And that's the important thing, you know? Yeah. I was just going to say that that's really kind of the litmus test is, is am I, how do I feel? Am I peaceful or not? And that's, right. it's, it's really as simple as that, isn't it? And, right. And truly, I mean, I, the best examples of that that I've had, I think really are in some ways with my daughter where, when she was younger, where, you know, I would really see, or my dog, you know, my former dog. Um, but, but when, where you, you know, really do we kind of return to peace. So, so then you can be, you know, if there's, if there's conflict, you can be firm with while still being loving and it's not a problem. It's not that either or conflict, you know, it's just, it's, it's, you can, you can do whatever needs to be done. Um, but it's, it's not attacking in any way. And it's not, it doesn't, change your love for them if they don't do what you want them to, you know? So, yeah. 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 It's, it's an inclusive embracing right. uh, identity that, that really uh, from, from that identity, you know, we, we can respond with kindness. Yeah. yeah. It just, it just comes, it flows through you as Ken always said. It just, you know, it's not something that you're having to think about. Mm -hmm. just, you just, you just are, you know, yeah. you, you let it flow from you. It's so. involuntary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, At some point, personal yeah. Personal self isn't in there. You know? <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's lovely, really. So, um, are we on six? I think we're on six, yeah. You may believe this course requires sacrifice of all you really hold dear. 
Oh, no, I think I just read six, actually. Okay. Yeah. Do so. not forget that sacrifice is total. There are no half sacrifices. You cannot give up heaven partially. You cannot be a little bit in hell. The word of God has no exceptions. It is this that makes it holy and beyond the world. It is its holiness that points to God. And it is, it is its holiness that makes you safe. It is denied if you attack any brother for anything. For it is here the split with God occurs, a split that is impossible, a split that cannot happen, yet a split in which you surely will believe because you have set up a situation that is impossible. And in this situation, the impossible can seem to happen. It seems to happen as the sacrifice of truth. And that really describes the entire world, right? It seems this impossible dream that we all have, of which we all believe we are the hero, right? We each have a separate version of that collective dream, a personal version that kind of intersects with the collective. And in which, you know, and it's really just that reenactment of the split we think we made with God that, that terrified us so that it split our mind into the ego and the, and, and, the, and the Holy Spirit, which is just that memory of wholeness in our mind, right? Humpty Dumpty never, never left the wall. Right. <laughs> and there was no wall. <laughs> yeah. 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 And of course it has, we can't make exceptions. You know, we have to, whenever, it can't be a little bit in heaven or a little bit in hell because, you know, if we're, if we're judging one brother, there goes the peace, mm -hmm. you know? And that's why I think it goes, it, it seems like it just, you know, we'll have it and then it's gone because we, you know, we've, we've got this projector. <laughs> we're not aware that we're projecting constantly new scenes of this, of our persecution at the hands of others. Um, but, but, you know, we have another incoming seeming attack or distraction that we identify with and there we go running after it again. Right, and become mindless. As you're saying, I was, I was picturing, you know, new characters uh, arriving stage left or stage right on the on the the movie of our mind. And, <laughs> right. that, you know, seem, seemingly new characters, but we're so fixated on the screen uh, that we have we've forgotten that we're really in the projection booth um, right. on some level that we're not even aware of, making up the movie as it goes along. As we go along, right? And and total and we totally disavowed any responsibility for that. Um, and yet once we do consider the idea that maybe uh, we don't have to, you know, know the whole mechanics of that process, we just have to be willing to question the the teacher of the insanity of the projector um, and be willing to, th to consider the idea that maybe there's another way to look at things and that's Holy Spirit's job. And <laughs> we just have to be, you know, willing to consider that maybe that perspective can lead us out of the dream. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, that's all, that's all that's needed. And yep. there, that's where the peace, this way lies peedness. Lies, this, this way <laughs> lies peace instead of madness is what I was trying to say. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Let's see. I think it's eight. Number eight. Okay. Teacher of God, do not forget the meaning of sacrifice. And remember that what each decision you make must mean in terms of cost. Decide for God and everything is given you at no cost at all. What a deal. Yeah, this is like an advertisement, right? <laughs> really? What, a, what good marketing Jesus is doing here. I know. <laughs> really? Decide against him and you choose nothing at the expense of the awareness of everything. Oh, that's the best marketing I've ever. I know. Ever. What would you teach? Remember only what you would learn. For it is here that your concern should be. Atonement is for you. Your learning claims it, and your learning gives it. The world contains it not. But learn this course, and it is yours. God holds out his word to you, for he has need of teachers. What other way is there to save his son? There we have it. <laughs> So the responsibility of the miracle worker is to accept the atonement for himself, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and that's our, our, real, our real career, our real job one, right. is, is to look at the sacrifice that we're making by choosing the ego. And you keep choosing again and again, you know, making another choice, right? Just yeah, keep, keep choosing that. against and, it and, yeah. and realizing the peace that's there. Right. Letting that reinforce that decision over and over. 
Right. And, and again, you know, making that, I mean, Ken said, you know, make it the most important thing mm -hmm. this all use all of the roles and normal things that you do in the world and roles you play to, to be part of your, you know, curriculum mm -hmm. and classroom and, and make, you know, practice, practice. They, those are all your opportunities to change your mind. And, and so just giving it that different purpose. And you practice and practice until you, you eventually grow up and you don't need to keep doing this because we become the course. And, you know, we don't need a teacher anymore as we begin to embody really the course, mm -hmm. right? I mean, embody isn't exactly the right word, but we, we integrate it completely. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, that, you know, Jesus's perspective becomes our perspective at the top of the ladder once all the guilt is gone. And that's a gradual process, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. As you're sharing that, I, I was flashing on another uh, <laughs> phrase that, you know, we, something like we can become a spotless mirror here. And I was thinking that, you know, if we, if we accept the light metaphorically of the Holy Spirit to, to illuminate every, every imagined sacrifice, every imagined slight and insult and grievance and see that it has had no effect on what we really are and that peace is possible in every moment. Right. Um, we're really, you know, ref using that decision-making uh, faculty to, to be a spotless mirror. Right. I mean, we don't have to follow the one, one point in chapter 15 says all the circuitous paths of fear down right. all of its circuitous paths. But, but whatever is upsetting us at the moment, that's our curriculum. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, as long as we, we, have, our, our job is to look at all, my job is to look at all my barriers to love's awareness, mm -hmm. which, you know, we have a different hierarchy of illusions, so mine will be different than yours probably. Right. But, right. but that's, you know, as, as long as it upsets me, that's, oh, that's my invitation. I didn't, you know, the ego hides in concealment. So it's, it, it is, we can become maybe not happy learners, but, but easier learners, more willing learners, because we do see and eventually happy learners. Mm -hmm. By saying, you know, this is how I didn't know it was there. So now I have an opportunity to let go of more, you know, I know if I'm reacting that this is a, a projection and, and, you know, I'm choosing to identify with guilt and fear and ultimately the sin, you know, believing that I sinned against God. And I, I, that way lies madness, as we were saying earlier, I want to find a, a different way, a better way, a healed way, you know, so it's a needless sacrifice that uh, right. the ego asks of us. And right, right. We can we can go through this so much more gracefully than we allow ourselves to. You know? Yeah, yeah. But, so. In, any of the cl closing remarks or, or announcements? Um, I don't think so. The only thing um, I just and I didn't have time to look at it, but I did see that the foundation for um, of course in miracles that it, it sounded like Jeff Siebert was doing another um, seminar or workshop coming up. So. Um, I'm hoping to go look at that. And so I would, I would, I would urge people, there's new announcements there. Um, and probably that also means that there's, I did also see that there was new um, materials, streaming and um, bookstore materials available. So yeah, they've been, they've been really good about uh, great uh, making, sales going on too. I exactly. Think. Every month they have a new, new sale on different, different mm -hmm. items and, and all of it's wonderful. Uh, also for people that might not be familiar with uh, Jeff Sieber's work, uh, uh, he's been doing these weekly classes for a number of, I think over a year now, and uh, uh, th those are all all free on the on the streaming mm -hmm. website. And I, I'm going to spend a little time catching up on some of those that I'm, I'm behind on listening to. And, Great. and uh, so I encourage people to check those out at facim.org, and also on acim.org, um, the the webinar series is continuing. And I believe one of the next ones coming up uh, very shortly is uh, with all the translators. Uh, and the international community of people who have helped bring the course to the world. So yeah. that's, that's going to be a, a fun one to catch. Uh, and yeah, they, they've all been really excellent too. So, so facim.org and acim.org are the two, the sister organization websites. And, uh, and you can find all of uh, Susan's wonderful writings at foraysandforgiveness.com. And I'll be posting this video along with the others uh, as well as Susan's website on acimblog.com. So anyway, thank you, uh, thank you Susan, and uh, to everyone watching and listening uh, for participating with us and uh, sharing this uh, undoing process of <laughs> letting go of sacrifice. <laughs> right, the development of trust. <laughs> exactly, exactly.
Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Until next time.